Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today's topic is going to be about wintertime largemouth fishing. Uh, you know, I, I generally spend all of my time chasing smallmouth during the late part of the year. I truly love doing it. It's a great way to catch a trophy, but it's also a great time of year to catch a trophy largemouth. Last year at this point, we were froze over uh, in my neck of the woods, but right now we're holding strong. You know, I think we're going to have I mean, we're probably going to make it to Thanksgiving before we, we freeze over. The, you know, the, we're about three weeks away, but we got another nice warm trend coming in uh, for this weekend. So I'm hoping to get out and, and get out and chase some bass. But I want to talk about largemouth today because largemouth and smallmouth really react differently. Uh, pretty much, through you know, this holds up throughout the country, but they, they react differently this time of year. In the north country, when you're talking wintering smallmouth, you're going to be fishing pretty extreme depths. I would say anywhere from 20 to 50 feet, depending on the lake. But the largemouth act much differently. The, the largemouth are very much uh, active during the winter months, including under the ice. They don't necessarily go dormant nearly as much as the smallmouth do. And what I've found is you kind of have two different classes of fish. You have a class that stays shallow and you have a class that stays deep. And I think for the most part, what they're, the reason they're choosing either the, the shallow or the deep has to do with the bait fish. You know, if you're talking about shallow largemouth, you know, right now you can catch them in four foot of water or less. Usually you're, you're targeting those fish on days like today where you have some, you know, not much wind, it's a nice strong sun, uh, and those fish can be shallow warming up. You're gonna be you're gonna be looking for areas that still have good green weeds. They'll really start to concentrate in some of those areas and be active. You can catch them, you know, pretty good when you find them. And they're gonna be in those areas all through the winter. Even with the, you know, if you're in an area, part of the country where you freeze over, those fish are gonna be in those shallow bays. You can catch them through the ice. You know, you can target them through the ice and catch them pretty good. Uh, in super shallow water, as long as you've got great, good green weeds and you've got some some panfish or bait fish around that they're feeding on, so that's one way I like to target them. For me right now, if I'm fishing those fish, I'm probably going to be throwing uh, a jig, you know, like this, a, a nice black and blue, a bigger size jig to any cover that I can find. So if you're on a shallow flat with some good green weeds, if you see a good thick clump of weeds or you see a stump. In that, you know, around those green weeds, a jig is a great way to get those fish to react. Uh, this is the Scott Canterbury flipping jig, one of my favorites. And if I'm not throwing that, guys, it may surprise you, but I'm going to be throwing a wake bait. And what I mean by wake bait is not necessarily a straight wake bait. The, you know, you can use a typical wake bait. The Berkeley wake bowl is a great bait. You can throw your long A's. Those all work really good. But what also works great is a, is a big square bill and you're not here's the whole key to it you're reeling it so slow that the square bill does not even dive underwater you know so you can choose a wake bait that is meant to do that but you can also choose uh, uh, any square bill that just wants to stay on the surface and you're reeling it so slow that it's on the surface and it's barely moving this is a technique that i came across years ago because of my dad like just started catching giants using an old uh, shallow running Rapala fat wrap and he would throw it out and reel it straight back. I'm talking on days, you know, where you've got skim ice on the shoreline, you've got your rods, your rod guides are freezing over and he has caught giants. I mean, in fact, his personal best was, you know, caught that way. Uh, but it's, it, it holds up everywhere. I don't care if you're down south or up north, it's a really good tactic to utilize. And I think it just goes back to those fish are keying in on bait fish or, or pan fish that are dying because of the, the drastically cool water temps. Uh, you get really, you know, some fish just can't, can't make it through that temperature drop and there's big bass taking advantage of it. So that's one thing that I'm doing. I'm either throwing the big jig or I'm throwing some sort of uh, you know, a, a square bowl or a wake bowl or some sort of bait that I can utilize as a wake bait on the surface at an extremely slow retrieve, or I'm going deeper and I'm going to be looking for the bait fish that those largemouth are keying in on. You know, we don't have the shad up here in the North Country, so I'm looking for bluegill. You know, bluegill do the same thing largemouth do. You'll have some that move shallow, 
for the winter months and you have some that go down into 25 30 feet of water i will graph looking for what i call christmas trees where you have bluegill that are so stacked up they look like a christmas tree on your graph and generally what i'm looking for is a steep break that's next to a weed flat uh, so if you've got a, a nice deep steep break that is butted up next to a flat that's got some good green weeds on it those are really good areas to find those bluegill Christmas trees. And when you find that, you can then either throw a jig down there or you can throw your classic wintertime metal baits, you know, whether it's a jig and spoon or a, uh, a blade bait type, type bait. Those are really good ways to catch some giant largemouth that are just mixed in with those bluegill for the winter. They might eat one bluegill a week, but that gets them through the winter. Uh, you know, the same thing down south. Instead of You can still target the bluegill that way, but it, you, you're probably targeting more on the shad and, and you have to follow the shad around. But when you find the shad, there will be largemouth that are hanging around them as well. Just again, though, you know, that, that's, the, that's my approach. I mean, I'm fishing one of two ways around my neck of the woods. I'm either fishing those break lines looking for the bluegill that are down there, or I'm up fishing super shallow, two to four foot of water, finding good green weeds where the bass are still utilizing those shallow areas. And they're going to be there all winter long. So that's my approach right now. Uh, I might head out and do a little bit here. If I do, I'll, I'll videotape it and put something out on it. But uh, it's a really good way to catch a giant fish. So if you do get the opportunity and you get a really nice day to get out for a couple hours, take advantage of it. The other thing I want to stress is it's the same thing with the smallmouth this time of year. Your bite windows are really small. Generally speaking, the best time of day to be out is when the sun is at its highest point. Usually you're talking from about noon to three o'clock is the best bite you're gonna have. So if you do get just a couple hours, that's when you wanna get out. You don't have to get up early. You don't have to be out you know, before the sun's up this time of year. It's just, you're, you're kind of battling the conditions and you don't need to be. You can choose the perfect time of day to be out. You can be you know, just out under the sun, sun trying to stay warm and you can catch a few fish while you're doing it. Generally speaking, none of these are super high number uh uh techniques i mean you, you know you're looking to get a bite here and there but you're probably not going to stumble on anything when you're fishing largemouth where you're catching 30 or 40 fish you're looking for you know a handful of bites an hour and, and they're usually good ones so get out there if you get the chance i appreciate watching guys stay tuned we'll do another one of these on wintering smallmouth coming up here shortly thanks for watching